Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about JCR cowbells. I've already done a pretty extensive video on cowbells in general, and I'll post that in the description so you can look at that again. And I feature many of these bells and some others in that video. But today we're just going to be talking about JCR. I've, I get a lot of questions every time I post a video with any kind of Afro-Cubian thing or any kind of cowbells. I immediately get a bunch of emails about, you know, where can I get these, which one should I get. Uh, and so I'm going to do this video and then I can refer people to it. So in my um, opinion, my humble opinion, uh, JCR cowbells are the best cowbells that I've ever played. Uh, unfortunately, they are not available anymore. When I was a kid in the late 70s and early 80s and into the 90s, as I was playing professionally, I would uh, sometimes go down to the Bronx and, and visit Kelly uh, at his shop. If I was going to a Yankees game, I'd go early and visit him and then maybe buy a bell or two and, and then grab a bite to eat. And I'd actually go to the Yankees game with some cowbells. And, uh, that, you know, you don't do that in New York. You didn't hit cowbells like some other places. But I would just carry them with me. And over the years, I bought several from him personally. And then also a, a good friend of mine, Barry Greenspan, who owned a store called Drummer's World on 45th Street, I know that Callie would bring in cowbells, and Barry would let me know when he had them, and I'd go in and try certain ones out and, and buy ones that I liked. And, you know, back then, they were 40 50 bucks. They were they were cheap. Now, like I said in an early video that I did, um, you know, last week or so, the Clave video, uh, these are just, it's ridiculous how much they're going for. I don't think anyone should ever pay, you know, $1,000 or whatever it is for a cowbell. That's crazy. So don't do that. I mean, they're great if you could find one at a reasonable price. Yeah, buy it. I mean, if you're rich, I guess you should do it. But it just keeps driving up the price. And these are great instruments. He made hundreds and hundreds of these things. Uh, he had a little shop. It was, I mean, at a workbench. It was like a mess in there. Uh, he was Puerto Rican, and, and my wife, then a girlfriend at the time, she was Puerto Rican, so he would he would give me advice <laughs> about that. And, uh, you know, he, he would just weld them there. And, and uh, you know, his dad, he told me, would make them. And um, he just knew how to make them. I don't know if there was any secret to the metal he used, but uh, they all sound completely different, kind of like the old Ks, you know. Uh, they were very, very different. So I have about a dozen of these, maybe more. Uh, I have to look, but... I know I have six here and then six up in, in my other, in the mountains, in my other house. So, um, I and I bought different sets of these, some for studio recording and others for playing live. So you could probably tell which ones, well, I don't know if you could see it, but the ones I use in the studio have more tape on them. They're drier. So I would use this kind of uh, duct, it's gaffer's tape. It's not duct tape. It doesn't leave the residue, so you just take it off and clean them. Uh, he used to put a little, yeah, this one's still in here, a little black dot like a rubber thing used for cabinets to keep them from slamming closed. Uh, he put that in there to muffle it some, but, uh, you know, you could use tape like that. It's fine. You can just take it off. Make sure you use gaffer's tape, once again, not duct tape. And that will muffle the bell so it doesn't ring like crazy because these bells really ring like forever. And it's fine because it's better that they ring and you can dampen them down than if they don't ring and they're just dead. So I like a good bit of ring, but but not too much because it interferes with the recording. Now live, I open them up more um, when I'm playing timbales or a drum set, and I, I let those ring a little bit more. So I would buy them in sets of two. So two ch this is two cha-cha bells, two timbale bells, and two salsa slash bongo bells. Okay, uh, so those are the... The ones he made. He made some different stuff too. I mean, I have all of his instruments. I have some congas. This is a set of bongos. Uh, these are JCR bongos. I took, I changed the heads out. I still have the original heads. The heads weren't great that he used. They were too thin and they would break. Uh, you had to be real careful if you cranked them up. So I kind of use these new skin heads. I still have his heads. I have the original set. I put those away. And as you can see, I'll take them out again. These have been used to death. I mean, these are the bongos I gig with all the time. I use them with the orchestra, and I do recordings with them. I think I've done a video here on YouTube with them. So uh, these are great. Very simple. One piece, not staff. All right? And he would number them. This is number eight. Okay, I don't know if you can see that eight in there. 
and he's got the stamp and all that. Nothing too fancy. All right. So those are J.C. Bongos. I have Timbales. Those are great. Uh, the Congos are, are very, very good. I'm not crazy about them. Uh, I have a set of old Goombops, and those are about the best Congos you can get. So I use those mostly. But anyway, he was a master uh, with metal. So the Cowbells were the, just the best. So let's just talk about these real quick, and then I'll compare them. I have some LPs here, which are great. They're fine. Uh, I have a Minel, which is not so great. Uh, I think this is an LP or an, a Pearl. No, this is an LP. Yeah. So we'll compare them. And I have a bon this is their Bongo Bell LP. This is Minel uh, Timbali Bell, uh, LP Timbali Bell, and an LP Cha Cha Bell. Now the LP Cha Cha Bells, they can be they're good. They're different sounding. They're dry. The silver ones are really nice. I have a few of those, and I showed you those on that um, that cowbell video. So we'll start with the Cha Cha Bells. Uh, certain ones he had would use the clamp, so a cowbell clamp. Other ones would have the the nut there. Okay, I I prefer the nut like that. Later, uh, this is a very early one. Later on, I think he made them all with this. I believe this one is was I got this in the 80s probably. One of my first ones that I bought. It's a great bell. So hopefully the camera uh, mic can handle this, but we'll play it for you. So this is a really low cha-cha bell, and this is a higher one. So you see how different they are. And, and they were like that. So this one it seems a little bit thinner. Now i got to say, I, I've used these, like I said, on hundreds and hundreds of gigs. Never had one problem with them. Never broken one. I have broken a few LP bells. And I don't play that hard, you know. They just, especially the timbali bells, what happens is the uh, seams come apart here. So the wells, you can see this on the minel, it's already doing it. So that'll happen on these thinner bells. Uh, his welds were really good, and they never break. So this is a Timbali bell, one of my favorites. And then this is the other Timbali bell. It sounds a little bit different. The ring a little more. So this is my live bell, this is my studio bell. You, see, you hear the difference. So I pick them because of the tone. So studio is this, and this. And live is this, and this. All right, and you, you know, uh, that's just me. So uh, the other day when I did that clave video, you can go back and watch that. I'm using my studio bells for that. All right, and then finally we have these, which I think were his best bells, the salsa slash, slash bongo bells. So. Uh, these were great, and they every time I'd use this on a gig, you know, uh, if I was just playing bongos and I picked this up, you know, with the big fish killer, I call it, the, you know, everybody would just turn around and smile because it sounds so different and so great. And then this is even uh, a little bit different. It's, it's thinner. It's almost like a timbali bell where it doesn't have that big opening, but... That's the lowest bell. I went in there and I said, man, I want the lowest bell you have because I was using it with my foot, my right foot, with my bass drum foot. I was playing timbales to play the bongo bell part. And uh, yeah, so he got me this one or made it for me. So I love this bell a lot. So these two are great. Uh, now let's compare those to some uh, LP bells. So this is an LP bongo bell. And it's just a tiny bit of tape. These tend to be a little bit dry. Obviously, they're great. Lots and lots of drummers use these. You know, if you listen to old Steve Gadd recordings, that, that's the sound. You know, he's playing Mozambique. That's, that's it. When you compare that to one of these, so it's a different sound, right? It's more open. It's lower. It's bigger. And I don't know. It's just more expressive. And then this is a minor timbali bell. That, um... That little bit of buzz you're hearing is from this 
back here to winged up and compare that to this So you get that whole high upper partial that you don't get with these other bells. And then we, we, I also picked out a um, LP timbali bell. Not bad at all. But again, we'll do the other timbali bell. And this one. So you hear the difference, right? I hope you do. I certainly do. And they also feel better to me. But the, again, these LP, Pearl, all those, those bells are not bad. They're fine. And no one's going to ever turn around and say, hey, your, your, your cowbell sounds like crap. We're going to go use another drummer. They're not going to fire you because of that, okay? It's just, the way, it's just the way it is. And, you know, these just sound great. And then the cha-cha bell, this is very, very dry. The LP bells are very dry. compared to the JCR. So even if you tape them up, they're both have a little bit of tape on there. They, the JCR bells still have that residual ring, that kind of harmonic sweetness to it. Okay, so that's, um, that's all I got to say about this. It's it's pretty straightforward for, to me. These are just really, really great bells. But again, you know, if you spell, spend $1,100 for a cowbell, I'm sure your wife will kill you and you, you'll feel weird about it. Uh, but they do not break. Again, and I play them hard and I play them all the time. So that's the good news. And if it did break, it's easy enough to re-weld it. I do a little bit of welding. I'm not good at it, but but I have welded some things and I've actually fixed some cowbells. These are harder to weld because, I don't know, they're almost pressed. I'm not sure how they do these. You see a weld here, but it's kind of cheap, you know. These are heavy, and I've, I saw him weld some of these, you know, because I was trying to learn. Uh, but, yeah, these are great. Everything's welded on here. It's like one piece, most. All right, so I hope that helps all your questions. So I will... From here on out, if I get an email, uh, I will just refer you to this video because uh, that's that's probably a lot of, uh, a lot better than me just uh, answering all those emails. So take care, and we'll see you next time.